We have to also remind everyone that right now, today, uh, we start a new week, but we're also starting a new period uh, for the Jewish year for Am Yisrael, and really for the whole world, but especially Am Yisrael, which is the time of Shovavim. Uh, the time of Shovavim is the time where it's an auspicious time to do Tikkun Abrit. And I don't believe there is any organization that has done as much in this particular uh, avenue in uh, the English-speaking world uh, as our organization, whether it's the film Tikkun Abrit, uh, that has certainly helped countless people do tshuva, both Jews and Gentiles, uh, or the uh, hundreds of lectures that we've spoken about this topic, uh, the Tikkun Abrit, it's not just uh, stopping it, it's staying uh, away from uh, immorality altogether, whether it's immorality with self or immorality with other people, without getting the proper education, no filter in the world is going to help you. Uh, so uh, I know that there are some organizations that are promoting different filters or perhaps they're uh, promoting different types of things, but the reality is anyone that has uh, checked them out and then came to us saw that there's a world of difference. Uh, and one of the reasons why we haven't worked with any other organization uh, on this, even though they've asked us to, uh, is simply because our way of doing things is simply getting to the bottom line, uh, core teachings of the sages and not uh, beating around the bush and uh, trying to, uh, you know, convince you into, uh, you know, uh, into stopping. It's uh, something that a person must be educated on to the point where they are disgusted by it. And the only way to do that is simply by knowing the truth about immorality altogether. Uh, and that's one of the things that, of course, the Satan fights against more than anything else. Now, one of the things that uh, the sages teach us about those people that fight against rabbis or fight against the specific teachings of the rabbis is that it's always connected to this meaning if you are immoral you're going to have an impossible time uh accepting the teachings of the sages which has a lot to do with the topic tonight uh, that the Chazonish is discussing, which is expanding on the medical expertise and the knowledge of the sages, but actually bringing up something that is constantly disputed uh, by naysayers, by people that don't like to hear the sages. And one of the main reasons of why people go against the Torah is because their soul is impure. Their soul is uh, full of... Uh, things that uh, full of spiritual damage they've caused themselves due to immorality. And one of the examples of this is what Shlomo Melech, King Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 19, Translation, lust broken or lust overcome is sweet to the soul, but turning from evil, meaning doing tshuva, is an abomination to fools. So Rashi, 900 years ago, clarifies this and says, fools detest the very idea that they should give up their wickedness. In so many words, what Rashi is telling us here is that when somebody is spiritually stupid, we're not talking about fools like someone that doesn't know how to add one plus one. We're talking about people that are spiritually stupid, people that are so uh, connected to their immorality, whether it's immorality of a man, immorality of a woman, whether it's with himself, or herself, with other people, promiscuity, all of these LGBTQ and other acronyms they add to themselves every week, all of these types of things create a spiritual stupidity unlike anything else. Unlike anything else. And what ends up happening is that these are the very same type of people that reject the teachings of the Torah and the sages more than anybody else. Why? As Rashi clarifies, they detest the idea. They hate it. They hate the fact that you're even telling them they need to change because that means that they're wrong. That means that their whole mentality, their whole ideology is wrong. That they have to control themselves is simply not something that they could comprehend or accept. And therefore, they reject any type of teachings that will tell them they have to control themselves, would tell them that they have to be, you know, honest with their spouse. They would tell them that they actually have to have a spouse, and so on and so forth. Now, the Gaon Mivilna, about 200 years ago, 
he interprets this uh, slightly differently, where he says that um, this great feeling that the uh, that Shlomo Melech is first referring to of how when you break a uh, a uh, desire and uh, it, feeling sweet to the soul, this is a uh, this is how this is specifically referring to conquering a lust, conquering a lust which ends up. Uh, feeling so good that he wants to continue. He wants to continue conquering it because he knows that there's nothing else that will give him this type of pleasure. And that's one of the things we learn from Pirkei Avot, the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, chapter 2, verse 4. Nullify your will before his will, so his will will nullify the will of others before your will. Well, in essence, what the Gaomi Vilna is trying to teach us here is that if... You nullify your will to fulfill every lust that you possibly want. And because you realize that God forbid it, you realize that whether it's wasting seed or the other examples I've already given multiple times, uh, you realize that it's not good for you. We're not talking about it's not good for you just uh, uh, physically. We're talking about it's not good for you spiritually. We're not just talking about it's not good for you spiritually. It's also not good for you physically. Anyone that has watched the uh, lectures that we have about this topic knows full well that there is literally endless amount of proofs that we've brought over the years to uh, to show both of these cases. But what ends up happening is is that if a person thinks that they can beat it one time and, uh, and 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 just overcome the desire, they have to simply they don't have to worry about it ever again. This is a mistake. 